Hi, this is Al Williams of Sunset Hill Solutions. In this video, we'll be having a look at Data Security Profiles, an information design tool. Uh, as with all the other demos that I've put together so far, I'm using the AdventureWorks DW database. It's a sample database from Microsoft that has dimension and fact tables. Okay, let's switch back to information design tool and get started. So the project that we have for this demo is called AdventureWorks Demo. It's the same one that uh, I've been using for all the other video tutorials that I've put together. And we want to go ahead now and go into the security editor. Log on as the administrator. Okay, let's expand the universes folder and we want to add a data security profile to the AdventureWorks demo universe. And the other items you see underneath there are business security profiles and data security profiles that were created in a separate video. Let's go ahead and create a new data security profile. And we'll call this data security profile QA testing. And what we want to do with this data security profile is based on the user that's logged in or the user group they belong to, we want to use a different connection. In other words, a connection to a different database. So I'm going to click on the connection there and edit. So the replacement connection I want to use, and I'll explain how this connection is different, is this one here, the CN Alt AdventureWorks demo. Click OK and click OK. So now we have this QA testing data security profile. Let's switch over to SQL Server so I can explain uh, how the second connection is different. So the original connection is to AdventureWorks DW 2008. I made a copy of this database and I call it Alt AdventureWorks DW. The only difference between these two databases is that in the fact reseller sales table I have changed the sales amount field. So if we run a query on the top 10 rows of the original data source, you'll see the sales amount. For example, the first row, 2024. And if I run that same query on the alt version, the sales amount field is twice as high. So the result of using this data security profile, when we run the same report with different users, we'd expect the sales to be twice as high. Now we've got the QA testing data security profile, which will change connections for any users belonging to this data security profile. So I'm going to go ahead and add one of the users I've got set up here. Typically you'd, you'd add a user group, but because this is a demo, it's just easier for me just to move one user. So Donald F now belongs to this QA testing data security profile. Make, save it. So now we can test the data security profile. We've added this user Donald F to the QA testing data security profile, which switches the connection to a different database. In order to test this, I'm going to log on as a user that doesn't belong to this group first. Let's try this again. Okay, so I'm logged on as, as Gary. I'm going to open this data security profiles report. So this report is set to refresh automatically. So it has sales by for, for the year 2004, broken down by country, territory, and city. So we have a look at the total for, for Alberta here, $255,000. Let me just take a screenshot of that. So again, this is for a user that doesn't belong to that data security profile we just created. I'm going to log off. Now I'll log in as a user we added to that data security profile. Okay, logged on as Donald now. If I go to that data security profiles report, we now see that the results are exactly double on the connection to the different database, which is exactly what we expected. So one of the real practical uses of being able to create data security profiles that switch connections is it's, it's a really good way to do QA testing. So if you're testing changes to your source databases and you want to be able to run reports and view 
the results from the two different sources uh, as part of your testing. It's a really, really good way to do that in business objects for. Okay, we'll go back into information design tool. We'll have a look at a few more data security profile types you can create. Click on the insert data security profile. So you see, we just did the connections uh, example. Under the controls tab, I'm not going to really do a demo on this one or the SQL tab, but I'll just explain what they do. So you can have different sets of users. Um, you can limit the result sets. So for example, you may have one set of users where you don't want them to bring back any more than 100,000 rows, and another set of users where they're allowed to bring back 500,000 rows. So you can create data security profiles that limit the result set and the execution time of the queries. The SQL tab, again, this um, gives you some flexibility in terms of the types of reports users can create. So you may have two different sets of report writers in your organization. Some are far more experienced, and you want to let them use sub-queries, complex operands in the query panel, multiple SQL statements, for example. So you may want to check all of these boxes for your more advanced users and leave them unchecked for your users that aren't quite as advanced. And so this just gives you a way to easily do that. You can also create data security profiles that limit or restrict the rows that are brought back. I created a separate video on this, sort of a more advanced example showing how to implement a security table. But I'll just show a basic example of how to restrict the rows that are brought back by creating a data security profile. So we'll call this data, data security profile American Sales. Now I'll click on the insert button here. The table I want to restrict the rows is geography sales territory and the where clause that we're going to build is the country and we want this to be equal to only the United States. Mm -hmm. Click OK. Put equal sign there and let me just validate. Okay. So sales territory country equals United States. Click OK, OK, and OK one more time. And we're going to add a different user to this group, Jimmy D. Let's go ahead and add him and save. Switch back into BI Launchpad. We'll log off as the previous user and we'll log in as Jimmy D. We're going to run the exact same report. If you remember, when we ran this report before, we had results from all the countries in the database. So I'll click on Data Security Profiles Report. So this is set to refresh on open. So now you see this sales by country and territory report is only returning data for the United States. So I'm seeing the country of the United States, I'm seeing all of the states, and there is no data for any other countries in this report. So that is a row level restriction using data security profiles. Okay, we'll switch back to information design tool. The last data security profile I want to illustrate is table substitution. But before we do that, I want to explain how this is going to work. Cancel out of here. Let's have a look at our database. So our database is AdventureWorks DW2008. And you can see we have a fact reseller sales table. So we'll assume that this, for example, would be the default currency US dollars. I created an exact duplicate of that table called fact reseller sales CAD. So the only difference between the fact reseller sales table and fact reseller sales CAD is the fact that I've changed the values in the sales amount field in the version of this fact table that contains the reseller sales in Canadian funds. So I've made the, the sales amount field 5% higher in the Canadian table. So back in information design tool, if I have a look at the data foundation for this universe, I've got fact reseller sales, but I don't have fact reseller sales CAD. I've got to add that in here. So I'll just right click and insert table. 
go ahead and find fact reseller sales CAD and finish. Okay, so let's put it, let's move it around so we can actually create a relationship. What we need to do here now is tie the product key field between these two tables. And we'll have it detect the cardinality. And that's done. So I can save this data foundation. I'll also go ahead and publish the universe again now that I've made a change to the data foundation. Okay, next. Finish. Yes. Okay, the universe published successfully. So let's go ahead and create another data security profile. I'm going to call this Data Security Profile Reseller Canadian. I'll click on the Tables tab. Now I want to click on the Insert button. So the original table is Fact Reseller Sales. The table I want to replace it with, now this is kind of interesting. Um, with the user ID that I have and the connection in this project, I have access to all of the databases in on this SQL Server. If I had multiple connections set up even to different database platforms, I could select a table on a separate physical server on a different platform if I wanted to. In this case, the table I want is from the same database and it is the reseller sales CAD. Click OK. Okay. Okay, so now we see original table, fact, reseller sales. Replacement table it shows a fully qualified name, database name, owner, and table name, fact, reseller, sales, CAD. Click OK. Now we see this data security profile showing up in the list, and we're going to add a user called Herb F here. And we're going to save this. OK, we've got the reseller Canadian data security profile. Before I go ahead and log in as Herb to test this out, a practical use of this type of data security profile would in fact be if, if your ETL process populated fact tables that had results in different currencies, so for example Canadian and US dollars, and you had one big sales report that was going to be run by users all across North America. You'd want to have the users in Canada run the report that points to the fact reseller sales CAD table and the American users point to the table containing the sales in US funds. So that's a good practical example of this type of data security profile. So let's go ahead and test this data security profile. First we'll log in as a user that hasn't been added to this data security profile. Logging in as Gary. I'm going to open up the data security profiles report. Okay. So we'll have a look. Let's just take a quick screenshot of the first set of values here. So I'm logged in as Gary, and with my user ID, I'm being pointed at the fact reseller sales. So the so the fact table it has the sales in U.S. dollars. Let me log off and log back in as. Herb. Okay, I'm going to log in as Herb now and run the exact same report. And we should see the results be about 5% higher. Okay, 268, 547 is the total for Alberta. If I have a look at that screenshot I just took, we can see that that is. 255, 759. So this is what we expected. The results in Canadian funds are 5% higher. So this is Al Williams from Sunset Hill Solutions. I hope that you found this uh, video informative and that uh, you have a better understanding now of what you can do with data security profiles in Business Objects 4. Feel free to have a look at the other videos I've created for Business Objects 4 as well. Thank you.